how's it going? Welcome to another video. Welcome to another episode of Albums Ranked. Today is October 31st, 2024. It's Halloween, All Hallows Eve, and what better, what other band comes to mind, for metalheads at least, when you say the words Halloween? Of course, I'm talking about none other than the poser black metal band Cradle of Filth, you know, I think as metalheads, when we start getting into the early, well, um, when we start getting into the more scarier side of metal for those who go down the black metal path, normally I think Filth is one of the first ones that we try before it's either the Filth or possibly Mayhem, you know, depending on what kind of angle you go on. Um, filth were definitely my first expo, were my first exposure to extreme metal, you know, without even realizing what black metal was back in 2009, I think, and um, with a very, very very accessible song, might I add, but yeah, aside from that, so I was like, all right, cool, let's do, let's rank all of Cradle of Filth's albums. I was wanting to do this one for a while, and I thought, well, shit, it's October, what better way to do it than do it on Halloween? So yeah, we've got 13 albums to get through, yep, 13 albums to get through, so let's just get straight into it, but like always, before we do, let me know down below what favourite Cradle of Filth album is yours. Is it something old? Is it something new? Is it somewhere in the middle? Let's get the conversation going and we'll have a good time. So yeah, let's just get started, started starting all the way down the bottom at number 13. So coming in at the bottom for me is the Manticore and Other Horrors from 2012. Yeah, this album was just weird. Um, the later half of the Filth albums are kind of weird. And if you're unfamiliar with them, they can all sort of blur together um, because they do follow a lot of the same structure in terms of like how the songs sound and what not. So um, also, these albums, these later half ones, they're quite long. If you're not familiar with longer albums, then it's a bit of a mission to get through them. But yeah, The Manticore and Other Horrors has this weird thing about it where Danny Filth, who's an amazing black metal singer, you can't deny that, with his high pitch, with his high pitch squeals and his little literal low gutturals, um, he does something on this album which is weird. I've never heard him do it before, and that is sing. I feel like he was trying, I don't know what he was trying to do, maybe just trying to do something different, um, which you can't blame him. This is album is like, what, 10 albums in? This is the 10th studio album, yeah. So he sort of tries to sing on this album, and I didn't, while it was interesting, don't get me wrong, um, and it definitely made a, made an, uh, made an impression on me, um, not the best. So yeah, what's off this album that's, that's amazing. Um, probably the title track Manticore, but looking, even looking at the title tracks, I don't actually remember which song is which, so I'm not going to pretend that I know what's going on. So yeah, we'll just get it out of the way. Number 13, The Manticore and Other Horrors. Number 12, Cryptoria. Is that how you say it? Cryptoria? Cryptoriana? <laughs> Cryptoriana. The seductiveness, the seductiveness of Decay. Very cool album title, very cool photo, I won't lie. Cradle's artwork is great. It's so gothic and so metal. It's almost cliche metal because it's just, you know, witches and naked women with blood and it's just real vampirism type stuff. It's like, it's like Twilight to the extreme. I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for saying that. This one is better, it's catchier, and the riffs on this one and another one are all over the place. Some of the riffing on this is just damn good, like, honestly. Um, this is a shorter album in terms of track length. The songs, this album's only eight songs, which is funny, but it's 52 minutes. So the last song, Death and the Maiden, is nearly nine minutes. Heartbreak and Senates, with Sense, Seance, sorry, is six and a half minutes. They're all great. Seductiveness of Decay, title track, is nearly eight minutes seven and a half you know it's pretty cool one thing that cradle i'm not sure when they jumped on it um uh, it might be it might be midian when they started to get female narrations in amongst a lot of their songs and um it's funny it's quite funny how much of cradle's lineup has changed <coughs> because they always need to have a really true british girl playing the role of you know Lilith half the time who's who's doing this beautiful spoken word stuff but it's quite funny when you listen to them back to back and you can hear like the differences in the voices but like you know like for example Vengeful Spirit has um Liv Christine on it you know not that I know who that is I'm just reading off notes here but the one that stands out for me off this album is you know the lion by his claw I heard that when it was released and I was like this is fun but yeah other than that it's a good album, but like, I'm probably not gonna listen to it again because there's just so much better filth out there. So yeah, number 12, Cryptoriana, The Seductiveness of Decay. Number 11, 
Thornography. Yeah, um, I didn't expect this one to go as low as it did, but it has. So you'll just have to deal with me on that. This one came out on the 17th of October, 2006. I actually, I actually thought just all of these albums came out on Halloween. I'm pretty sure half of them do. Um, so while I mentioned that a lot of these filth albums have female narrations. There's obviously male narrations as well, and most of them, if not all of them, are done by Dag Dog Bradley, who is um, who is um, uh, Pinhead in the horror film, you know, Hellraiser. Um, this one is fun. Don't get me wrong. It's a bit. Um, it's a, it's not as bombastic as other filth albums before and after. It's quite. Um, I think it's quite like, you know, just standard songs if you know what I mean, like there isn't this overall arc, even though the title, uh, it says here, the title represents mankind's obsession with sin and self. The thorn combines images of that which troubled Christ, being the crown of thorns, thus imitating man's seeming desire to hurt God and also of the protecting thorn and the need to enclose a secret place or the soul from attack. <sighs> Danny Filth is quite a smart man and quite well educated so yeah a bit like Marilyn Manson you don't expect that when you hear all this stuff an addiction to self-punishment or something equally poisonous you know so it's it's poor like the addiction to pornography you know what that means but like thorn or oh, it's, it's just great I think it's awesome anyway enough on that the musical style there's a lot of salt there's a few solos on this album it's quite a it's an it's a it's an abusive album like it's very it's it's earlier filth you know what i mean so it's very much it's much faster compared to the likes of the later half like cryptoriana and all that jazz um tonight in flames is probably the best song on here if i if if i don't study them too much you know what i mean the fetus of a new king of a new day kicking it's always fun um the f that's uh the lovesick of formina that one's cool um the byronic man i thought was funny but what makes this album you know, lower is the fact that just, you know, other than Tonight in Flames, that's like the real, real standout one. Everything else is just kind of good. And <laughs> Temptation, the cover, um, I mean, despite what you say, I think that's a great cover. Like, that's in a way what covers should be. A song taken from a completely different genre and just flipped on its head, you know. Um, and it sort of ties in with the whole thornography thing about giving in to temptation and whatnot and, you know, man's desire to do wrong, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Yeah. Would I listen to this album again? Probably because it's, it's, is it a, is it a filth classic? I'm not sure, but for me, it just falls slightly. So yeah. Number 11, thornography. Number 10 is Darkly Darkly Venus Aversa. Yeah. I remember when this one came out, this came out on November 1st. 2010 so not quite halloween the day after um again freaky album cover um i remember when this one came out like i said it's 2010 so what did i say earlier how i found filth in like 2009 so having a new filth album come out i was like oh awesome um this one is a this one is a concept album in the same vein as its predecessor godspeed which we'll talk about that when we get there this time it's centering on the demon Limith, lilith sorry the first wife of the biblical adam Danny Filth has revealed to Metal Hammer that it would be a feminine companion to Peace to Godspeed. So Godspeed is more very masculine album due to what it's about, obviously. But like I say, we'll talk about that later. Uh, it's about the resurgence of Lilith into modern society as a deity. Um, yeah, there is a bit of Victorian in there, especially at heart. And it's a goth, it's a gothic horror. Yeah, honestly, there's it's it's in depth. Um, while this album is good, it's definitely in that vein of later half filth, where a lot of it is the same kind of sound without being you know too harsh on it. Like they can all blend together these later half albums. I think I first heard the song Lilith Immaculate when that came out, and I thought this is cool because it was faster than what I was used to at that time, and you know it had Danny's vocals in it obviously but it also had the girl in it the the British keyboard player I, I assume I'm not actually sure but most of the British most most of the females in filth are the keyboard player so I'm just gonna assume um but honestly the nun with the astral the astral habit was cool there's that um uh where is it oh forgive me father I have sinned I've that was a single as well that was cool like I don't get like don't get me wrong retreat of the sacred heart the pursuit the persecution song these are good songs they're, it's good. It's a good filth album. Pretty much from here on out, uh, like good filth albums would listen to again albums. But like, yeah, I'm not rushing back to this one. You know, do I own it on CD? No. But still, the Spawn of Love and War. It's all. They were good songs. Don't get me wrong. It's. It was. I probably have more time for it because it was the first brand new filth that I heard. So it's like, oh yeah. While it isn't the best, I've got a soft spot for it. So yeah. Number ten. Darkly, darkly, Venus Aversa. Number nine. Hammer of the Witches, this is a heavy album. This one was catchy, much more catchier than the others. Um, 
and I was excited to get to this one because I hadn't heard this one at all, ever. So it was like, oh, cool, this one is a bit better than the others, obviously, hence why it's number nine. It starts with Walpurgis Eve, which is just this awesome 90 second intro, it just sounds great. Um, deflowering the Maidenhead, this pleasuring the goddess. These titles, these titles, man, honestly, it's real typical gothic, like, yeah, you know, it's just gothic. It's like typo negative, but British, you know what I mean? It's old history and stuff like that. Blackest Magic in Practice, that one was great. I do love that song. I thought that one was awesome. The title track was cool. Um, Onward Christian Soldiers, you know, good stuff. Um, honestly, this one was cool. There's a good, I'm pretty sure this is the album that has a good amount of soloing in it as well. I could be wrong, I'm sorry. Um, like I say, they all do blend together, but from what I remember, things like Black Magic in Practice, that was that was just great. Honestly, this is a heavy album, it's riffy, and it's really, really good. And this came out on, this came out in the middle of July, so nowhere near Halloween, so that's funny. But yeah, the lineup is constantly changing, they're pretty much the same, You've there's pretty much always someone different on these albums, especially the like it's quite it's just funny like that so yeah um it's good it's heavy and it's catchy don't get me wrong but there's obviously so much better so yeah number nine uh hammer of the witches number eight is existence is futile their most recent album this is easily by far their best like later half album i think everything on this album compared to what we like just come through like for the hammer and manticore and all that other stuff everything about it it just takes a step up. I don't know why, I don't know how, but just everything on this album sounds much better. I actually had this album on CD, I should have grabbed it out. Um, and it's it's 56 minutes, but it flew by. It's just a lot easier and better to listen to. And I think because of why that is, is because it's kind of unofficially, unofficially, I think, broken up into like, we'll just say, broken up into acts. Do you know what I mean? Like the fate of the the fate of the world on our shoulders. The first song, the intro, the ninety second intro, right? And then it goes straight into existential terror. You know that one's great. Necromantic fantasies is awesome. I love that slower side of filth. I think it's really really good. Crawling King Chaos is a tiny bit faster one, but still good. And then you get here comes a candle, the infernal lullaby, which is another ninety second instrumental, which is this beautiful. I'm pretty sure that's the beautiful piano piece. Um, but yeah, do you know what I mean? So you've got four songs, and then an interlude, and then another bunch of four songs, Black Smoke Curling from the Lips of War, Disclosure Between Man and His Soul, The Dying Is It, and The Dying of the Embers, and then Ashen of Mortality, another instrumental. So it breaks it up into sections, makes it easier to listen to if you're trying to get through it, but it really creates this whole vibe of like, just, it's just that, I just think it's that much better than everything else we've talked about. How Many Tears to Nurture a Rose, that one is so good. That's just, just that name in itself. It's honestly amazing. And then of course, A Stark Invincible. A funny song to end on, like a funny song full stop. It's just, yeah, but it works. I think Existence of Fut is Futile is a really, really good album. And I really hope, I'm sure they're working on another album. Um, Doug Bradley is obviously back on this album. And yeah, this one came out on the 22nd of October, 2021. So yeah, it's most recent. And um, I think I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm excited to see what they do next. If it's anything like this, it'll be good. They're probably working on a new album now. I'm sure they are, they always are. So yeah, this one's great. It's definitely one of the best ones in this sort of 2010 plus era, you could say. So yeah, it's great, I love it. Uh, number eight, Existence is Futile. Number seven, I think is quite a few people's number ones. Number seven is Midian from the year 2000. This one came out on the 30th of October, just before Halloween. And don't get me wrong, while this album is great, I just get a kick out of others. So yeah, I don't remember if I said this at the start, but I should say it now. My, you can say the top half of this, of this ranking is a bit unorthodox it's a bit different okay so just bear with that as we carry on um midian is a fantastic album don't get me wrong and i can totally see why people consider it like a classic like a real i wouldn't say a shift in the band but like just a step up do you know what i mean so don't get me wrong the reason i have it at number seven doesn't mean it's bad at the gates of midian is a cute little instrumental only to be Be beaten down by cthulhu dawn you know that one's just awesome it's only four minutes but god damn it's good saffron's curse is always great i've loved that song for ages because my little sister's name is saffron and i remember when i first started getting into the filth i was like hey Seth, look at this um lord abortion is cool her ghost in the fog though like obviously that's the album that's the song that brings midian to the front you know her ghost in the fog is great but i won't lie so the reason this one is not as high as the others is probably because of 
the way the narration sounds, Ghost in the Fog in particular, do you know what I mean? Well, it's not really the narration, but like the female vocals, the way it sounds in that song and, or, and across the whole album, it's not as clear, you could say, like it's not as at the front. It's quite buried in, in the mix and, you know, and there's normally a growl going on top of it as well and it just kind of gets mushed in there. So for me, that's kind of why, like, that has so much potential. What's her name? Sarah Jezebel Deva, you know? Um, yeah, that's kind of why Midian falls for me. While it's a heavy album and it's good, don't get me wrong, Cthulhu Dawn and Ghost in the Fog, you know, we love those ones, but that's why this one falls a bit for me, just because of that weird mixture of sounds like that. So, yeah, number seven, Midian. Number six, Dusk and Her Embrace. Yeah, the sophomore album. This one, this one, this is pure, like, fucking black metal filth this is like yeah this is what we want when people hear the words cradle of filth um this one came out on the 28th of august 1996 so it's not quite 30 years yet and um from the debut to this one was just like oh obviously i haven't spoken about the debut yet but I, don't worry it's coming um yeah this one was just very it's very all go isn't it as is the debut but we'll talk about that later you know it's all go danny's voice is just ridiculous it's nine songs um of in 50 minutes and it's just it's just great like honestly everything from here plus everything from here up is just like top shelf filth in my opinion obviously um humana inspired to nightmare again a 90 second intro you've gotta love them heaven torn asunder just fantastic stuff funeral in Carp in carpathia in carpathia in Carpathia, <laughs> you know, eight and a half minutes. I love that one. A gold, a gothic romance, just red roses for the devil's whore, just real fucking cold cemetery, red wine, dead bodies, you know, vampires, goths. It's everything that those people love. Malice through the looking glass, not Alice, but Malice. Come on, great stuff. The Graveyard by Moonlight. Oh, these song titles are a are a goth's wet dream, honestly. Beauty slept in Sodom and just, yeah. It's literally nine out of nine. It's a fantastic album. And yeah, the amount of passion I have for this one can only, will only get doubled with what we talk about afterwards. So yeah, it's a great album. If you haven't heard it, go listen to it. Dusk in Her Embrace coming in at number six. Number five is the Bombastic album. Number five is Damnation and a Day. Yeah, I was quite fascinated when I read about this album, how it was Filth's first, I think, or if, is it Filth, Filth's only album to feature, like, proper, full-blown, oh, I don't know, definitely the first one, to feature full-blown orchestras as opposed to just synth-style synth orchestra. It says right here, it features the 101-piece Budapest Film Orchestra, including the 40-piece Budapest Film Choir. Wow. Talk about over-the-top. <laughs> and it's a freaking long one as well. This album is... Um, this album is 76 minutes, so that is like proper film-length stuff. But there's a lot of... Um, shorter little pieces on here there's a lot of shorter little pieces throughout quite a lot of the early filth um catalog so it kind of makes it interesting to listen to um like a bruise upon the silent moon a beautiful beautiful intro for two and a half minutes two minutes rather and then boom the promise of fever just knocks you out it's so good um better to rain in hell i thought was amazing serpent tongue and carry on is great um, i've noticed here that the that the sides you could say are uh, they have names uh, Fantasia Down is side one. Side two is Paradise Lost, which I'm pretty sure is what this album is based on. Yeah, the album is partly based on John Milton's poem of Paradise Lost. So, partly based. I'm assuming part two is. Dance in Any Language, a plague on words. That's a cool song. Yeah, Better to Rain, Serpent Tongue and Carry On. So that's that's the Paradise Lost side. Um, there's a Doberman Pharaoh, which is the nod to Nile, the death metal band Nile, um, which I find is so random. But Aside from that, it's actually a really, really good song. Um, a Scarlet Witch Lit the Season, that one's fun. Thank God for the Suffering, that was cool, I liked it. But yeah, it's a long album, it's, but I love it because it's so bombastic and over the top. I love symphonic metal, you know, but this this one was just like, boom, you know, like, here we go, here's what we can do. It, I think it was, it's so, they were, uh, well, I think I read somewhere they were worried about how much it was going to cost or whatever. 
one full time guitar. Blah, 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 yeah, I can't. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. So number five, Damnation and a Day. Right. Believe it or not, number number four is the Opus, Cruelty and the Beast. Um, yeah. This is just epic filth. This is quintessential filth. I put a thing up on Instagram the other day saying, hey, I put a question out saying, what's your favorite Cradle of the Filth album? And about four of them came back, not everyone answered obviously, but four of them came back saying Cruelty and the Beast. And I was like, mate, that's all good. There was one guy that put up Thornography. So if you're watching, I apologize um, for putting that so low. But yeah, this album is more like, yeah, is more or less the perfect Cradle of Filth album. It's about it's about a concept album based on the legend of the Hungarian blood countess Elizabeth Bathory, you know, um, and features guess it, yeah, you know, just that real evil woman that us black metalheads love, do you know what I mean? She was just an absolute awful being in history, but hey, she gave us good black metal, so all good. Um, once Upon an Atrocity, Once Upon an Atrocity. Again, 90 seconds, perfect intro. You know, Cruelty Bought Three Orchards, uh, Beneath the Howling Stars, that one's just, I'm not gonna do it, but do you know what I mean? Just the twisted nails in the faith, oh. It's this perfect concept album. And then you've got Bathory Arai, which goes for nearly 12 minutes. Um, it's it's just the fantastic album. The scoring on it is just great. It, it, everyone on the album sounds absolutely perfect. Like they're all in, I was about to say in tune, but like, you know what I mean? They're all in tune with each other. And you know, it's album three, I think at this point. Yeah, so they've really like honed in who they are, what they want to sound like. So yeah, like this one came out on the 5th of May. So again, nowhere near Halloween, but it's just so good. Don't get me wrong. I know a lot of people have this at number one, but for me, it comes in at number four because I just have soft spots for other albums. So yeah, number four, Cruelty and the Beast. And to be honest, number three is the debut, The Principles of Evil Made Flesh. Um, I, I say this in a lot of videos, but if you know anything about me, you know that I, I love I really care about debut albums. It's where bands are most pure and innocent and vulnerable, and it's where they're not the most passionate, but you know, they just, they really hone in on what they want to do on debut albums, where, you know, production and stuff might fail, doesn't matter, you know, it's just like, this is what they wanted to do. And the principles of Evil Man Flesh is just this absolute onslaught of black metal. It's probably a bit like Dusk in Her Embrace, while it stands out quite a lot from black metal. It's probably the blackest metal sounding album, maybe, of it tied in with the second album. But just like, like the minute you hear Darkness Our Bride, the way that song starts, it goes for two minutes, but the way that song starts, you can just tell that, oh, okay, this isn't your typical Bathory under the sign of the black mark type of black metal. Do you know what I mean? This isn't even Dark Throne. This is something completely different. Um, and then you get the title track, The Principles of Evil Made Flesh, which is just, again, Danny's voice in this album is just such an ear-raping experience. It's absolutely outrageous. But just like Dusk and Her Embrace, these song titles are enough to put a goth, like, into the happiest of realms. Like, yeah, The Forest Whispers My Name. Ooh, eerie, but goddamn. I do remember that one being awesome. Iscariot, the cute little instrumental, that one's awesome. The Black Goddess Rises, one final grave and kiss. Again, another instrumental. There's a lot of cute little filler, not filler, but, you know, album spots where they just have, like, nods to classical music or, like, you know, one of them is pretty much, I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head, but one of them, I think it's of Mr. Midnight Skies because that one's the long one. That's a really long song. It's eight minutes. That one was great. Um, where, you know, the intro or whatever is pretty much to Cotter and Fugue in D minor, you know. <laughs> you know, um... Yeah, um, it's just awesome. It's great. Summer Dying Fast, that one's a great way to end it. But yeah, it's a fantastic album. It's one of the best black metal albums of all time, in my opinion. I think it's really, really, really fun. Um, the album cover as well, I just I just love that album cover. There's just something real sinister and gothic and dark and fun about it as well. You know, it's just a really, really good album. So yeah, number three, The Principles of Evil Made Flesh. <sighs> Yeah, all right, let's get this one out of the way. Number two is Godspeed of the Devil's Thunder. Now, I know a lot of people put this one down low, and I can totally get why, because it will absolutely belong in that slump of, you know, the later Cradle albums that do all sound the same. However, this is the first full-blown Cradle album that I heard. Remember when I was speaking at the start and I said about that real accessible song that I first heard? Yeah, it was the death of love. You know, that real slow boom, boom, ba -da, boom, 
you know, I heard that and I was like, Danny's, while he's growling, you can beautifully understand all the words. So it was very easy to like that song. And with the female in that and the riffing in it, and it was just, you know, even my mum liked that song and she hates extreme metal. So I was just like, this is a great song. So I went out and got my hands on the album. Don't ask how. <clears throat> and um, straight away, I was like, it, like you could say it was my first symphonic album as well but i didn't really consider it symphonic because i didn't really discover that until like three years later but anyway <coughs> this is a concept album surrounding the story of gilles gilles De, however you say it gilles de Ray, which uh what's his name yeah gilles de Ray, um after joan of arc's death he slid into a life of debauchery, which ended up with him trying to reclaim his fortune through alchemy and witchcraft. So again, a real typical cradle topic to talk about. This led him to murder and kidnapping. He was eventually arrested by the Catholic Church and tried. It's a great gothic sort of fairy tale because he's a very pious man at the beginning and he turns extremely evil. Um, the story runs concurrently throughout the album. It's not just vague ideas orbiting a main satellite. It's a story and the narrative is actually taken from trial transcripts that were taken down in secular court at the time of his judgment. So um, what I love about this album is that for a start. Like it was like, wow, that's just a real typical filth concept. Do you know what I mean? If we're not talking about Bathory, we're talking about witchcraft and stuff. Um, while it's not the most like musically attractive album, I won't lie. Obviously, it's just a filth album that I actually listen to quite a lot just because it takes me back in time and it's and it's quite easy to just listen to in my opinion I think you know what I mean like in grandeur and Frankincense development stirs is the two and a half minute orchestral instrumental with some narration in it as well you have Doug Bradley on this album again obviously um, shat out of hell which is uh, I don't know just it's probably the dumbest song on the album I won't lie but it's it's just an onslaught of filth really um yeah the death of love you know seven minutes of just mid-tempo just boom boom great song beautiful narration great video too um the 13th Caesar another onslaught uh tiff I can never say this word tiffalgs tiffal tiffalgs I don't know it's an instrumental but it's it's fun enough anyway tragic kingdom fine song sweetest male fissier yeah. That one's cool. You can't know. Um, I think I'm pretty sure it's um, "Sweetest Male Physia," which has the uh, the um, the narration of um, summoning the devil at the start of it. I conjure you, Baron Satan, bells above. You know, I was like hearing that. I was like, ooh, freaky. You know, and I was ah, oh, it's just great. Honey and sulfur is all good. Midnight shadows crawl to darken council with life. Great stuff. But um, the one that really makes this album amazing if it's not a death of love is definitely darkness in car night you know it's just it's and then it's a nine minute song of just eerie horror and once you understand the concept that it's singing about it's actually so much cooler than you think it is at face value do you know what i mean um i think it's is it honey and sulfur or midnights i can't remember where where he sings where the song starts with um Sometimes I beheaded them with daggers, with poniards, with knives, you know, and it was just, again, a real eerie way to start a song, which everyone knows. Um, and then the title track, yeah, I, I know, like I said, this is an unorthodox list, and this, having this one all the way up here is weird, but it's my, I want to say childhood, but it's my more or less first filth album, so I love it. Yeah, it's great. So, yeah, number two, Godspeed, Off the Devil's Thunder. So, number one for me, I won't lie, just like Godspeed, is a weird one. Um, like how Godspeed was my first real filth album, this is pretty much the next one that turned up because I think uh, this one had the had a song on it, which we'll talk to when we get there, uh, mentioned on uh, the IT crowd, if you've ever watched that, with um, uh, when Richmond goes to a funeral and he recommends coffin fodder to a grieving wife mother something like that i can't remember it's been a long time and i was like ha, 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 cradle of filth let's go listen to that song and i remember hearing that at the age of you know 14 15 or whatever and just being like "Ooh, that's yucky um and then listening to it now or you know later on it's actually such a good song coffin fodder is amazing but we'll talk about that later number one is nymphetamine um yeah it, it has to be it's such a loud aggressive obnoxious violent 
Cradle album. It's just, in a way, it to me, like how Cruelty is the is perfect, Nymphetamine, Methamphetamine, whatever, Nymphetamine is also perfect. You know, it's a great album cover. Look at it. It's just fantastic. Um, a quick summary of every song. It's got a really beautiful, beautiful intro. Um, just the, the, the song about it is just really, really great. Gilded Cunt is just abusive and loud and just obnoxious and it's just wow um nemesis is about well, it's not about september 11 but it's almost inspired by september 11 a few people could you know a few people could remain unaware of what was going on terrorism you know the song delves into the mind of one such militant and offers the reasoning behind this whole war you know it's a it's a it's a war driven song that's where that one's come from gabriel was another is another gothic romance embroidered around a murderous infatuation with the dusky foreign woman of the title. You know, it's just, it's just, that one's, this one is not a concept album at all. It's just standalone tracks. And maybe that's why it's number one. There's nothing grandiose about it, which is weird because I love the grandiose. You know what I mean? Nymphetamine is just, oh, sorry. Yeah, well, Nymphetamine is great, but Absinthe and Faust has a great little intro. I love the way that song starts, how it kind of just, it like, Mer 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 merges. It just merges with the ending of Gabriel. So good. Nymphetamine, the title track, um, is actually a 10 minute song. Um, I forgot about that until much recently, you know, because the single that we hear and probably the version that most of us have heard is the slower half, you know, but actually it's got quite a, it's got quite a brutal first half. It's a, like I say, it's a 10 minute song and then you have the song and then there's that little part in the end. So yeah, if you haven't heard the whole 10 minute version of Nymphetamine, Go listen to it. It's called Nymphetamine Overdose, I'm pretty sure. And then the single is called Nymphetamine Fix. So as, as if to say, quick, just get the quick, just get the little fix. And then, yeah, you get it. Medusa and Hemlock. I love that song as well. That one's just awesome. Coffin Fodder. That's the one with the, that's the IT crowd song. Just, ah, oh, when I first heard that riff, man. And then the bass. And it says here that that is the closest that filth will ever get to sounding like Iron Maiden, which is probably why I love that song so much. But still, it's just dun 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 It's an aggressive song, it's loud, it's abusive, it's fun. Filthy Little Secret is a Lovecraftian tale, it's just awesome. Swan, Swan Song for the Raven, I've just read, is actually the second part to a ghost, Her Ghost in the Fog. So, listen to those two together. It's actually cool, it's got a very Sleepy Hollow, Nightmare Before Christmas type vibe. Mother of Abominations is just dun 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 it's just a mother of abominations of a song it's insane but yeah it's a fun listen probably because of how loud and obnoxious it is honestly if you if you are familiar with it but think it's you know bottom tier go listen to it again and just try hone in what i feel towards it it's a fantastic album i love it number one for me nim Fenemy. awesome as team thank you so much for hanging out with me while i sit here and get increasingly me more increasingly more passionate about cradle of filth albums like i said at the start let me know down below what yours is is yours something weird like nymphetamine like mine or is it cult classic is it cruelty and the beast is it the debut or is it something weird like darkly darkly versus a set or whatever it's called um yeah this was such a fun little ranking happy halloween everybody personally it's not my favorite holiday but hey we're jumping on the train so yeah keep an eye out for the next ranking um christ knows what it'll be but until that happens everybody stay inside stay safe jam the filth and i'll see you all in the next video. See you later.